Hello. Wanted to give you an overview of Chapter 1 uh, and just go through a sample problem as you think about what you're working on for daily problems number one. Uh, so if you haven't already looked at Chapter 1, uh, it's an excellent overview of Chem 111 and Chem 118 topics that we're going to use this entire semester. So uh, it's a great way to just review the things from uh, previous chemistry classes that you need to know and that we're going to use. So it's a great opportunity to practice. Uh, also, just note that section 1.13 is on solubility. Great uh, resource when you think about what you're doing in lab this week, which is solubility. Uh, so I wanted to talk about the problems that you're working on, uh, especially questions two and three. Uh, and I've listed out some of the things up here uh, that you should be thinking about as you're thinking about questions two and three. Uh, it's really important as we go through this semester to focus on all of these topics because we're going to do them over and over again uh, and we need to get accurate and quick with doing Lewis structures. Uh, we also need to practice uh, counting electrons correctly and knowing that there are two ways to count electrons, octet counting and formal charge counting. Uh, make sure we know the difference and make sure we can do those again accurately and quickly. Um, also, we should be able to in any atom, any molecule, pick out an atom um, and know what the hybridization and geometry of that atom uh, is in the molecule. Right? And again, great time to practice doing that. Uh, as we look ahead to things that we're going to do the rest of the week, uh, I want you to start using organic shorthand um, and to start thinking about resonance structures. Right? Those are things that we're going to do all the time and we might as well start thinking about them and you'll see those uh, in daily problems number two. So now is a good time to start thinking about them. Uh, what I wanted to do was look at a molecule and go through what you're doing on um, questions two and three. Um, this one actually is related to question three. And the molecule I want to look at is called carbone. Uh, carbone is an essential oil. It's isolated from caraway and dill seeds. Uh, it has the, the smell of caraway or the smell of mint, depending on uh, some really interesting aspect of this, which is that this is uh, called a chiral molecule and it has what are called enantiomers. And so we'll talk about that later on in the semester, but this is just a preview. Carbone is a chiral molecule, right? And you can, if you want a little preview, you can look and think about why there's something special about this molecule. Um, but we'll get to that later on. What I want to focus on now is looking at this molecule um, and again, looking at all the atoms, seeing how they behave, making sure they all have octets and see what the formal charge is going to be. Uh, we recognize that carbon has four bonds. If you study this structure, um, you'll see that carbon has four bonds everywhere. If carbon has four bonds, it doesn't have a formal charge. Uh, oxygen has two bonds here, and organic chemists are often lazy. They don't put in lone pairs. But if we add in the lone pairs, we'll recognize that oxygen has its standard number of bonds, too, and it has uh, all the electrons it needs to fulfill its octet. Right. What I want to do is, like what you're doing in the problem, is focus on a couple of atoms and a couple of bonds. So I want to look at that carbon, that carbon, um, and then I also want to look at two different bonds. So I want to look at that bond, and I want to look at that bond. All right. So if we look at the carbon over here, uh, again, we should be able to look at the carbon and say, what is the hybridization of that carbon? What is its geometry? So if we look at this carbon, hopefully we quickly see that that carbon is attached to four different things. It has four bonds. All right, so this has to be sp3 hybridized. Right, it's attached to four different groups. If it's sp3 hybridized, it's tetrahedral. Right, and we should be able to do that very, very quickly. All right, if we look at the carbon down here on the bottom, we should see that that's attached to three different things. It's attached to two hydrogens and another carbon, right? So that molecule is sp2 hybridized uh, and it's trigonal planar. One thing that I want you to get in the habit of doing is not just writing down sp2 or sp3. It's thinking about the orbitals that are present. And so when you see that something is sp3 hybridized, I want you to think that we have four sp3 orbitals, right? and those orbitals are all forming sigma bonds. Right? So each forms a sigma bond, because there are four sigma bonds around that carbon. Uh, when you think about this atom being sp2 hybridized, I want you to recognize that we have three sp2 orbitals. 
and one p orbital. The sp2 orbitals are involved in the three sigma bonds that that carbon is making. And so three sp2 orbitals for sigma bonds. And we have one p orbital which is involved in the pi bond. All right, so I want you to think about these in terms of uh, the orbitals present, not just writing down uh, you know, some vocabulary term. Right? And when you think about the bonds, right, let me fix this arrow. When you think about these bonds, right, the bond between those two carbons, it's actually two bonds, right? So we have a sigma bond plus a pi bond, right? And when we think about those bonds, we should think about what orbitals are overlapping to form those bonds. And to form the sigma bond, we're overlapping um, an sp2 plus an sp2, those two hybrid orbitals from each of the carbons to form the sigma bond. And when we form the pi bond, it's going to be the overlap of a p plus a p. All right? And when we look at this single bond up here, right, there's only one bond. And when we form a sigma bond, it's always overlap of hybrid orbitals or an s orbital with a hydrogen. But in this case, we have a sigma bond. Right? And if we look at the carbon on the top, Right, so we're going to have the overlap of that carbon that we already looked at. So we know that's an sp3 orbital. And we look at the carbon on the bottom, the hybridization of that carbon, it only has one, two, three things around it. It's sp2 hybridized. So this is actually a sigma bond overlapping an sp3 and an sp2 orbital. Right? And so this is the sort of thing that I want you to be able to do. Look at any atom, look at any bond, do this sort of analysis. Right? And as we start looking ahead to organic shorthand, I hope that very quickly you'll stop drawing things like this uh, and draw the same molecule the way that organic chemists would draw it, which is like that. Right? So that's the organic shorthand that we're going to use much more this semester. Okay.